Welcome in everybody. Today we have episode 17 and it's going to be a pretty interesting one. This is going to be a video describing why all the uh, other leading multivitamin supplements, vitamin and mineral formulas are definitely not like us. And what I mean by that is that most multivitamin and mineral supplements on the market are dangerously low in key nutrients. Um, even some of the top you know, top tier level of them. Uh, for example, like Balanced Essentials, One a Day, and even Centrum Silver, which is, you know, supposed to be taken by seniors who are looking out for their health. But many of the nutrients that are essential for optimal wellness are completely absent from some of these formulas altogether. So I got Dr. Whiting here to kind of break down some of the things that are not there and the reason why they're so uh, essential. For example, high vitality liquid from Phoenix Nutritionals has 10,000 IUs of vitamin A. And in balanced essentials, there's only 5,000. And in Centrum Silver, there's only 3,500. And vitamin A is essential for what? Vitamin A is my favorite little vitamin. Yeah. I often said that if I could only have one vitamin, uh, stranded on a desert island, it would be vitamin A. The reason for this is, is its ability to modulate the immune system, yeah. the ability to help build probiotics, the ability, most especially, to protect the mucosal linings of the body. That's where the interior of the body can potentially meet the environment, such as the uh, ears, nose, and throat. Uh, janitor urinary tract um, and it protects those against infection and so this is really uh, in our day and age especially one of the most important vitamins there are yeah and see I, people probably don't think about immune when they think about vitamin A here's another good example vitamin C a thousand milligrams in high vitality and 120 only in balanced essential and in one a day, there's only 60 milligrams, and Centrum Silver, there's only 60 milligrams. And as you all know, vitamin C is really essential for immune health, right? I mean, just like yep. vitamin A? Yep, but it's a natural anti antibiotic, antiviral. Uh, it helps with cellular uh, uh, reproduction. Yeah. It also <clears throat> helps capillaries, uh, keeps them strong, so we don't get capillary fragility. Mm. Um, and of course, uh, if you take enough vitamin C, uh, it can help your immune system yeah. uh, ward off things like bacteria and virus. Yeah, and then with a whole complete formula like this, that all works together to be even more powerful for your immune Synergy system. Synergy is essential. Yeah, and just a couple more. Um, for example, uh, Let's look at, um, which one do you, do you think is a good one here? Oh, here's a good one. Vitamin B12, which is super essential to a lot of people. Yep. Uh, 200 milligrams, uh, 200 MCG in high vitality liquid. Only six in balanced essential in one a day. And only 25 in Centrum Silver. And as you know, vitamin B12 is what? Well, vitamin B12 is known as the nerve vitamin. And so it's essential in a stressful life. And there are only two kinds of people in the world these days. <laughs> uh, those that say they have excess stress and those that lie and say they don't. Uh, additionally, vitamin B12 is quite difficult for the body to absorb. So higher doses are necessary. Yeah. Uh, what I put in the high vitality formula uh, is several thousand percent above DV or yeah. daily value. And people go, wow, isn't that too much? No, because you're not, A, you're not absorbing that much because it's very difficult for the body to absorb. Any, any nutritionist or even MD will tell you that. Secondly, with the level of stress, both physical, uh, emotional, mental, uh, that most people are under, uh, they're utilizing vitamin B12 in much higher amounts. Yeah. So as you can see, the the other uh, multivitamin and mineral formulas on the market are definitely not like us. So if you want to check out that formula, you can check it out at phoenixvitamins.com. 
You can check out the High Vitality Liquid or the High Vitality Caps. There's a place where you can actually download or just view it on your computer or your phone, the whole ingredient list, and compare it to your vitamin. And I think in a very short order, you'll find that they're definitely not like us. Next up today, um, as you may know, our Candida videos have been really on fire lately. Um, oral thrush is, is, was even in the headline news the other day. And, uh, you know, yeast and, and, and those kinds of things, uh, yeast overgrowth. What we want to talk about today is we want to pull no punches as far as all the myths and the facts in Candida. Candida being the most misunderstood health condition and even at its epidemic proportions for the last 20 years that, that I've been in the nutrition field, um, most professionals don't even acknowledge the existence of Candida even though it's on a lot of side effects for different things. Um, and it even says it on the label of, of certain products. So Dr. Whiting, he's been a pioneer of, 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 of helping people support Candida for over 40 years. So let's go ahead and break down some of the basics. I mean, what would be the good starting place would be oral thrush. Well, first of all, before we get into these specifics, I've been looking online recently for Candida related videos and I have never seen so much misinformation in my life. Yeah. Most of these people are probably very sincere. Unfortunately, they are sincerely wrong. And before we get into some specifics, there is one thing you must understand that no one is talking about. There are actually two forms of candida disorder. They're caused by the same organism, but they're very, very different. The first one is what most people are talking about, and that's what we call uh, isolated or confined yeast overgrowth. And it is confined, confined to the small intestine and the colon. If this is the situation a person is in, many of the things that others are talking about, such as caprylic acid, probiotics, uh, dietary changes, etc., etc., are likely to be at least helpful. They might even eliminate the problem if it's not been going on too long. However, most people who have developed a candida overgrowth have had it for several years. Reason being is that most medical professionals don't acknowledge it even exists. So it goes undiagnosed, it goes untreated, it goes on and on. Well, eventually what happens over time is the candida organism breaks free from the intestinal tract. And that can be due to uh, lack of, of gut wall uh, uh, integrity, uh, leaky gut, all, all kinds of potential situations. Point of the matter is, is that once it leaves the intestines and enters the bloodstream, we now have a totally different situation. And this we call systemic candidiasis. Once the candida organism has become systemic, the diets, the caprylic acid, the garlic, uh, Probiotic. the probiotics uh, are almost totally ineffective. Yeah. Another thing you need to know about the so-called candida diet that is 100% a myth. It does not ultimately solve this problem. It can help the symptoms. It helps the symptoms. So in other words, if you go on these highly restrictive candida diets where you can eat practically nothing, your symptoms will get better. But I guarantee you the day you go off that program, and start eating like a normal, healthy human being again, yeah. your symptoms will return with a vengeance because all it's doing is controlling symptomology. It is not addressing the cause of the problem. So, um, the first thing, if you suspect you have a candida overgrowth, 
uh, digestive disturbances, headache, brain fog, uh, fatigue, lethargy, uh, confusion. Oral thrush. Uh, oral thrush, uh, genitourinary yeast overgrowth, toenail fungus. All of oh, these toenail things fungus. Yeah, can that's possibly one, yeah. lead uh, or be indicative of a systemic candida overgrowth. Uh, because I'm so adamant about uh, dealing with this problem, which is epidemic in proportion, uh, at least three out of five people have had a yeast overgrowth sometime in their life. Why? Because of several factors. So let's break down what the main causes of candida overgrowth are. And there are several subclasses. But the main one is antibiotic abuse. Yeah. Uh, medicine gives an antibiotic. And that just for, kind of makes it explode. Oh, it can very easily, yeah. yes. Uh, steroid use, birth control medication. And of course, uh, it can be sexually transmitted from one person to another. And, and uh, I think what a lot of people think is the diet caused it. But in reality, when you get to those points, People always tell you that, oh, well, if I cut out sugar, it'll stop it, right? But that doesn't really, it's just kind of putting a Band-Aid over it. Right. All it's doing is making you feel better. Uh, Which is a good thing, but... But then again, if anybody stops eating excess sugar, they're going to feel better. Yeah. Um, but I guarantee you that diet does not cause candida. Yeah. That's the next big myth. Oh, it's our terrible diet that causes this candida overgrowth wrong well then all the kids would have it exactly <laughs> exactly because we're all eating this junk food diet some of us don't admit it but we are <laughs> and if diet caused this problem you're right everybody would have it lots of people do but not everybody and so remember diet does not cause the situation and dietary restrictions will not eliminate it they will make you feel better for the short term but they will not eliminate. I've had practitioners tell me, oh, once you have candida, uh, you have to go on the, the candida diet uh, and you have to stay on it for life. Yeah. Well, that doesn't sound like a, 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 a cure or, or a, an elimination of the problem. Yeah. It sounds like a bandage that you're changing every day. Um, so understand that once the candida becomes systemic, the only thing that we've ever been able to find is an oxygenated supplement, a supplement that is perfectly safe and it increases the oxygen level of the blood and soft tissues. You see, Candida albicans, which is the organism, along with many molds, fungus, uh, even some parasites, are what we call anaerobic in nature. So in other words, they survive in a low oxygen environment. And you combine that low oxygen environment together with adequate moisture and you're off to the races. Yeah. Now, a lot of people uh, are, are have an oxygen, blood oxygen level below optimum because we don't exercise anymore. We're not active yeah. and that is a compounding problem. A low oxygen level will not cause candida, but it'll make it devilishly hard for you to get rid of it. So by increasing the oxygen level of the blood and soft tissues over time, we can help the body to eliminate these anaerobic uh, organisms. And yes, we do recommend cutting out certain foods, especially during the process, because it'll make you feel better yeah. and there's no reason to be miserable. Uh, but understand that those dietary restrictions that you all hate, but you do it because you're desperate, won't solve your problem. Yeah. And so you can actually take um, the test, the symptom test, um, and it's just a self-test on Dr. Whiting's website, thecandidaclinic.com. And there's a phone number there um, that you can call him. And if so, if you suspect you have systemic candida, it might be a good place to start, especially if you've been searching for a while and you keep getting all this in misinformation, it might be a great place to start. Um, and I think soon we should do a video on uh, 
aerobic versus anaerobic. I think so. If you're gonna, if you're new here, you definitely want to subscribe because we're gonna do a, a video coming up soon about anaerobic versus uh, aerobic. Aerobic. Yeah, because organisms. I, yeah. Organism. I think it'll be good. Next up, we have lack of mobility and obesity for people in their thir their twenties and thirties. Um, in other words, people who can't work out but still want to lose weight and they're having a tougher time because they can't work out. How do those people address weight loss safely in your opinion? Well, while exercise is vitally important for well-being. If you can't uh, do it. If you can't do it, you can't do it. Yeah. And it is possible to lose weight and normalize your body weight uh, if you're totally sedentary. It takes a little longer, takes a little more work, yep. but it's entirely possible. And this is because um, exercise increases your metabolism, which would be a good thing. But we can also increase metabolism by uh, modulating the diet and uh, by key nutrients that have also been shown to be metabolic enhancers. Yeah. So it is entirely possible. If you're in a situation where you don't exercise or you can't or you can't exercise uh, rest assured that there is uh, a very viable pathway to normalizing your weight you might have to be a little more patient than somebody who's out running five miles a week yeah. but I'm telling you uh, after 40 plus years uh, in the weight management field you can easily do that and I wrote a book couple of years ago about all of my findings from the last 40 years uh, about weight management. And we talk about the chemical side, the psychological side, uh, the emotional side, and it all plays a role uh, in weight management because the body begins to adhere excess weight under a variety of conditions. It's not just eating too much food. I mean, that's a big part of it. But it's also eating the wrong foods for your chemistry. Uh, I've had people come to us that are eating a thousand calories a day and gaining weight. Yeah. Because they're eating the wrong foods for their chemistry. And that is a huge problem. So there's a, it, it's not just a simple issue. There's also the emotional issues. Uh, the stress issues. And you got to kind of figure out if you're carb intolerant or calorie sensitive. Well, too. that's, that's, the, a first, good place that's to start, the first yeah. point. Yeah. And that's what we do first. And then we begin to break down the emotional issues, the lifestyle issues, uh, what's going on in your life, uh, because they're all factors that could potentially uh, negatively affect uh, weight loss. And most people, the only thing they know what to do to try to control their weight is to eat less, yeah. eat less, always eat less. But then that sometimes triggers starvation hormones. It yeah. almost always does. And the starvation hormones have one my primary purpose, and that's to slow your metabolism so you don't starve to death. Yeah. Not something you want if you're trying to lose weight. Very counter. I've had people uh, on come to us, like I said, on a thousand calories and lose nothing or actually gain weight. First thing I did was double their calories to 2,000 a day and they lost five pounds. Yeah. Because their metabolism is, is in starvation mode and it's in survival mode. And that's not where you want to be if you're interested in getting control of your weight. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions about anything he just said about this, you know, losing weight safely if you can't work out, just ask in the comments. It'll, you know, ask any questions or, or, or comment say any comments you have about it um especially if they're very detailed about what we uh or go buy about. my book or yeah go buy the book i've got everything in there including a couple of hundred recipes there you go um we're gonna do a quick lightning round on uh calcium and absorption so here we go um why is natural calcium support from phoenix vitamins so superior over other calciums well it's all about uh Ratio and uh, chemical potency. compatibility. Potency. Potency. I mean, we have seven different chelates of calcium yeah. in our formula. 
and science has recently shown that a variety of different chelates uh, enhances the absorption of calcium. Keep in mind that calcium is the most difficult mineral for the body to absorb. Yep. And so anything we can do uh, to help. Uh, also, our product is naturally acidic because calcium, in fact, all minerals absorb in an acid environment. And most people, especially over the age of 50, those who really need a calcium supplement are too alkaline to absorb it efficiently. And so why is calcium so difficult to absorb? Because it is in nature, uh, it is found naturally to be alkaline. Okay. And so in other words, think that all calcium, regardless of what your bottle says, regardless of what our bottle says, needs all an acid calcium begins as calcium carbonate, which okay. is highly, highly alkaline. It's what we do to it afterwards by chelating it with citric acid, malic acid, mm. amino acids, and others that make it bioavailable and higher absorbed. So what are the other cofactoring nutrients that help the uptake and absorption? Just those through all those ones you just listed. Well, there are some trace minerals that are important, uh, such as boron, magnesium, uh, copper, zinc, uh, and these help to transport calcium uh, molecules to the bone tissue and soft tissues where they're needed.